Eyes open. Here we go. Welcome to Florida Men on Florida Man with Greg, Wayne, Josh, and Cameron. Mm. The podcast where Floridians discuss the legends, mm-hmm. lore, and crazy stories that always seem to take place in, in Florida. Florida. I tell you what. Yep. Last week was yep. very special for a lot of reasons. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. So many yeah. reasons. Specifically so. Uh, because Josh came over oh, gosh. to my house, okay, and he delivered an Amazon purchase that he had been hiding from me. Really? Okay. Uh, sure. I had <laughs> ordered a get, get ripped quick pill okay. online. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because well, I felt like my lack of well, they were bogo. Yes. So you took one, and then you brought one for uh, him. Can you tell? Where's the third one? <laughs> well, you well, don't only need two it, of us need it. <laughs> yeah. Chiseled Mike over here. Look at these cats. Uh, you are Busted looking out. good. I Thank was you so say much, it man. Earlier. I appreciate it. Uh, continue that compliment this way. Yeah, Wayne looks great. Thank you okay, so much, well, Cameron. Get ripped quick is getting a... Uh, the pill worked on me. It, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Did you on. take it with water? Yep. Oh, you're not supposed to take it with oh, water. Oh, no. no. What, plum juice? No, you raw dog it. Just yeah, uh, right in. Shoot it back okay. and then... For let, let the esophagus dissolve it. 100. Exactly. Okay. For seven days, I was in the bathroom. I came out looking like a Greek god. It's true. Wow. Still okay. sweaty, too. Adonis. You know how Wayne, come hmm. on, uh, if he's at a restaurant, okay, <laughs> server brings him the wrong thing. Takes it, baby. He just He's just going to accept it. I'm yeah. agreeable. Now, I've seen him order fajitas and right. take a cold chimichanga, now, which is the direct <laughs> opposite. It is completely different. But my question here is, yeah. Does does this change based on the price of the item? I see what so, you're saying. Uh, just to kind of put this in perspective, okay. I had to make a phone call today. I, I we went go. to a Publix, uh, yeah. a local Publix. They did not have what I needed for my son's birthday party. Come on, I specifically what, what do you need, need mini cupcakes mm. for all his little three year old friends at yeah. school. Right, and uh, they didn't have any, mm-hmm. so we haven't had any in like a month. I'm like that doesn't seem right. Right, called another Publix. <laughs> what? I called another Publix. They're like, yeah, we have some. I'm sure. like, this is a scarcity item. I'm like, can you please hold? <laughs> put them on hold. Yeah, I need them. I said, can you please put them behind the counter? Yeah. yeah. She's like, how many do you need? I need I need 16 cupcakes. Oh, right. nightmare. I said, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Please hold them. Yeah. So I get there. Yep. Uh, some guy, I talked to a girl on, on, on the phone. Some guy was like, you the cupcake guy? Okay. That's am I? weird. I mean, for, that's, I that's the, the rumor guy? around for town. For 16 cupcakes, that seems a lot. Are you the cupcake yeah, I, guy? I get the nickname for He's only like, 16? you got a cart? And I'm like, no. Pardon? Bro brings out 16 cases of mini oh cupcakes. Oh, my God. In my please thought process, tell me you took them. I would have just <laughs> please taken Please tell me them. you took them. That's, I would have walked out. Yes. I would just struggle to push that bad boy that's out. That's my the, question is, okay, the here's Lord's the thing. Will. I asked for 16. That was like minimum that I needed. Right. All right. Uh-huh. I think I walked away with like 60. I don't come know what on. happened. That's what I'm talking about. I felt he bad, dude. Yeah. I was like, okay, r- they come in queen. They come in packs of 12. Yeah. And I'm like, I need a chocolate and a vanilla. Obviously. Of course. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. And, and then egg. I was like, I mean, what if they want two? I, I'm like, what the guy is like looking two. at the yeah. stack of cupcakes. That you don't had. want your party to be the party where a child wants an extra cupcake exactly. and can't yeah. have it. God so bless. I took three chocolates and three uh, <laughs> okay. vanillas and I have like. That was it? 72 cupcakes, I think, is what I'm talking about. Dude, honestly, you graduated from uh, Muffin Top Boy to Cupcake Man. It's true. Which is good. That's a huge, like, you know, I will say this, man. I I, I just want you to confirm, though. Yeah. In that situation. I would have walked away with all of them. 16 cupcakes. I I would have tipped the bag boy. Because I don't know what else to do. You know the oddest thing about this story? What? We have no cupcakes here. Oh, dude, I... I, that was I was gonna bring some. Yeah, were you? Yeah. Okay. I told my wife I'm like, we don't wow. need these cupcakes. It would have lit I'm gonna take some to the boys. Four door pickup truck out there didn't Hold on. have any room. Let me make a call. Let me see if I can get some before headlines. Come on. Okay, headline. Headline. Hello, Cameron. All right. So our first headline tonight, we have a uh, Florida man sheriff. Okay. Okay. Grady right. Judd. Um. Mm, let's Worse, just let's better. just let, let me just do the headline and we'll uh, see who you okay, think it is. Yeah, so. Wayne. All right. Well, anyway, so in in this guy's county, yeah. the sheriff's county, there was a uh, a break in. Okay, mm-hmm. a home invasion. That's against the law. Uh, it those. is against the law. Uh, so there was a suspicious person that uh, broke into a house. Mm-hmm. 
ended up getting out of the house and getting down into the, uh, you know, kind of farther in the neighborhood before the cops got him. Okay. But the homeowner that had their house broken into, he did take a couple shots at this burglar. With a gun? Okay. With a gun, yeah. Yeah. And so um, now, like, you like know. Like bye-bye shots, they call it, them. Yeah, bye-bye. yeah, yeah. Uh, he didn't hit him. Thanks for coming. Pop, pop. Exactly. He okay. didn't hit the uh, burglar. Uh, the burglar got out. And so about 20 deputies get down into this neighborhood. Dogs are out. Oh, yeah. Uh, this guy's jumping fences, breaking into houses nice. as he goes down the neighborhood. Yep. All this kind of stuff. So this sheriff is saying now, listen, the guy that shot at this, the homeowner, sure, I'm proud of you. Well, I would love for any homeowner to shoot anybody that comes into your house to take um, to just blast off two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, uh, you know, if someone's breaking into your house, there's a uh-huh. quote, you're more than welcome to shoot them in Santa Rosa County. I we prefer that's... that you do actually. Ew. So whoever Santa that Rosa was, County. Yep, okay. not Polk. Uh whoever that was that took that shot, you're not in trouble. Come see us. We have gun safety classes. We put on every uh, every other Saturday. If you take that, you'll shoot a lot better, and hopefully you'll save the taxpayers some money. Okay. So yeah. his point was that yeah. you, we could save some taxpaying money yep. if you had shot the guy. Okay. I see, what, I see yeah. what he's saying. And so instead of sending the dogs out and 20 yeah. deputies to get this guy unharmed. But the taxpayers yeah. aren't paying for those gun lessons? Um, I mean, maybe it's just check cheaper. Okay. Just check checkmate, checkmate, Sheriff. Checkmate. Yeah. Hold on. Go ahead. Okay. At, at the average shot, you know, I'm five eight, right? right? Right. So if I shoot a gun straight, how far does that bullet go? I don't know, at least two feet. Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> what at that least have to do with your height. No, at least two feet, but at most what? Uh, a mile. Yeah. Two, two miles. miles. Yeah. Sure. That seems reckless for me personally. I think a bullet flying a mile away. Right. Is I would, reckless. I would, and I, mile. And I, I would have guessed. It. I yeah. would have guessed that it was Polk County. Oh, easily. Because yeah. we have a um, the king of our county does say yeah. stuff like that all the time. Okay. But Santa Rosa County, uh-huh. uh, two things. One, I'm just learning that that county exists right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. then two, um, what's his name, this sheriff? Hmm. Um, Hold on. Let me go back. Because you support a mile worth of bullets. I don't know. I'm just saying. It seems risky. Yeah, but I mean. It's risky. Yeah, I don't know, man. Also, what, what I was going to say was him yeah. saying, hey, come down and see us. We'll help you. That's tricky. Okay. Like for a cop, like you see what I'm saying? Mm. Like what if he well, really, He's just trying to educate. Yeah, but what if he's like you what what they really did was naughty and now he's like come see us. Oh, oh. we'll help you shoot better. Like if the uh, okay, now you're talking about like criminals are like I wish I could shoot better. They come okay. in, jokes yeah. on you, now you're in jail. Oh god, that's I don't sneaky. know if that's it, but I yeah. think I'd make a pretty good sheriff actually. I don't think so. Now that I think about it, let's move on. Way off. Okay. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> All right, so our next headline, we have a uh, helicopter I like those. Huh. That uh, went down in Lake Apopka. All right. This yeah. helicopter or this helicopter was being used because they were like spraying. Um, I think they're spraying like uh, more like water and like plants and, and stuff like that. Yeah. Pesticide into our. That sounds uh, good. To our water sources. Yeah. That sounds right. And so anyways, it's to reduce the growth of invasive plants. But yes, they were spraying pesticide into this lake. Mm hmm. Uh, and the helicopter went down during this process. That's yeah. a good place to go down. Eco terrorism. A nice lake. Yeah. So a nice soft landing. Yeah. Uh, so while they were out recovering this helicopter mm-hmm. in Lake Apopka, um, they pulled that helicopter up. Okay. And then found another one right next to it. Come on. Huh. Now that's dude. God that's is so spot good, man. For helicopters. Praise God for that because that. two free helicopters. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's very similar to the fish and the bread story, isn't it? It really is. Because the county probably needed two helicopters, and then they found I two don't in a lake. The fish I mean, they're the wrecked. Bread. I mean, they're not going to be able to use them. The weird thing about this one man's trash, and I can't really wrap my head around this. And the the article is kind of upsetting because it doesn't have enough information. But <laughs> that. Second helicopter went down in the same day as the first helicopter. That's it. Yeah. And they can't, they don't know why. They don't say, they don't, they they mention the, the, they say that the first pilot was okay. That's tricky. Hold on. They never mention the second pilot and they never mention why the second helicopter was there. That's tricky. So one pesticide spring helicopter flies over, crashes. They go, send out the backup. We don't got time to clean this up. Second one comes out, boom, crash the same spot. We don't know. Same day? The Come same on. day, pretty much the same spot. And they're surprised they found the second helicopter? That's the thing is they act like they had no idea that the helico- the second helicopter had How crashed. How big is that uh-huh. lake? Uh, lake Apopka, I think, is very big. A big lake? Yeah. 
Hmm. But uh, I don't honestly, it. I don't understand. Sounds like a riddle. Yeah, the Bermuda Triangle. It's a it's is, a mystery for sure. Yeah. This happened yesterday, though. So okay, Did, they said didn't that, send a third helicopter out. Oh God, I hope not. This no, this is a job for boats now. Yeah. Uh, anyways, all right. So our next headline: We have a Florida teacher. Come okay. On. All right. So always good. Always starts off good. Uh, Florida middle school teacher. Yeah. Was arrested after an investigation showed that she struck a student with a broomstick. Cool. Mm. I'm down. You can't do that. Science. Science? Yeah. It's probably a science teacher, you know, showing inertia. Right. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. And what happens where when inertia stops? stops. Yeah. yeah. Hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I feel like, were you around when they were hitting uh, kids Kid. in school? Yeah. Oh, You're yeah. pretty old. I I'm mean, pretty old. Yeah. They were slapping kids around. Pappy, what was it like when you were in uh, school? Did you ever just, get hit with a broomstick? Uh, I got hit with a two by four. What? Yeah. yeah. There in was school? Cor- there was corporal punishment um, mm-hmm. when we were in school. Oh, no. At oof. our private school, we went to. I'm not even joking. Oh, no. Around. There was, there if was you were spankings. naughty, you went to the pre- uh, principal's office, who was also the preacher, and he would shut the door and lock it. Yep. And well, he that would, was un- uncomfortable. He would whoop you with a ruler. I'm not even making that up. How would he close up. the door? I don't know why he would lock it from other people coming in. Just Wait, did you to, get spanked? To prevent no, I my my parent didn't sign the permission slip for me to be my spanked. Signed, my parents signed it twice and had it notarized. And you didn't get spanked. I got spanked on the bottom of my feet. What? That sounds like that's a, not a spanking. I think you pay for that. To each his own. A lot but of I people. On, I sat that. on the yeah. edge of the desk, took my shoes off. He whipped me with a ruler on the feet. Are not, you serious? Not well, Shrek. I crossed my heart for cussing. God, that explains so much. Uh, all right, our other Felt Florida good. did it. <laughs> kind of tickly. Stop yeah. cussing. Ah, no, you didn't. Good man. All right, so our next headline also about a Florida teacher. Yeah. All right, I don't know what's happening in schools these days. This uh, this this teacher was pulled mm-hmm. over. Um, by police after she she was found following a stopped lawn maintenance trailer too closely. Mm. And like everybody else was going around it. Okay. She was just sitting behind it, I think oh, so is what the giveaway was. They couldn't open the trailer to get the <laughs> yeah. get They the couldn't get the lawn mowers out. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, police stopped her. Uh, her breath smelled like alcohol and she had the odor of feces on her person. Now, well, there's an here's an outlier. She just left the school apparently. The te- this is a teacher. This is a teacher. Is it elementary school? Because feces is everywhere. That's that's a good point. Yeah, uh, it does you. not say what age group or what uh, kind of school that she taught out, but mm-hmm. it does say that they found six bottles of vodka in her car. Okay. That's a lot of vodka. Um, and yeah. she yeah. did, uh, you know, eventually admit that she did drink vodka out of a cup while in her school's parking lot. Hold on. Why? I mean, I guess the vodka well, helps the admission. But specify why the cup. That? Yeah. 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 Here, I have a question for all the parents who okay. listen to our show. Would you, if you could choose between your child's teacher being covered in feces and right. sober mm. uh, or drunk and not covered in feces, which uh, one would you pick? Does the That's feces fall off? No, never does. Okay, Is it an everyday okay. occurrence of feces? I, As a child who attended school one yeah. time, I would pick a drunk teacher over a doo-doo teacher. I mean, I've had a drunk teacher. I haven't had a doo-doo teacher, so I'm going to stick with a drunk teacher. Yeah. I guess I'd go drunk as long as they're not angry drunk. That's true. Yeah. Like a sympathetic, like... Like cool teacher drunk. Kind of funny drunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Silly, like trips a a lot. Like a math teacher. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 Math teacher. Yeah, no, I'd prefer uh, uh, historically drunk, the most drunk teachers are drunk economic teachers. teachers. Come yeah. on. Oh, economic Come teachers on. are the cool teachers. Uh, our next headline also about a school because this uh, Florida mom, all right, uh, she was very upset that her son's high school just wasn't feeding him enough at the cafeteria. Big boy. Okay. Right. Big boy. Sure. Probably on the He's football He's wasting team. away. Uh, and so she was upset, said that the cafeteria was not providing enough food for him mm-hmm. to eat. And so she called uh, the Coco High School oh, and nice. um, left them a voicemail. Yeah. Okay. okay. That said that she was going to blow up the high school. Come well, on. Well, there's a, yeah. If she, she said in the voicemail, if you don't start feeding my blank children better, <laughs> yep. I'm going to come yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm going to come around and blow that mother blank up. Come it's on. skinny uh, in the blank parts. If you don't start feeding my skinny children, yes. mm-hmm. I'm going to blow that skinny school up. Exactly. That's exactly what it says. I just blanked it out for yeah, no mad, reason. Mad libs. Uh, and so anyways, uh, the, the <laughs> they got there the next morning at school. She for left sure. it that night. Yeah. And then like this uh, secretary got to school that morning, yeah. heard all the voicemails and 
called the cops and they did a you know well, basically you emptied the school. Nope. Had to do a whole bomb sweep. But now, had she they, was wrong. She I mean, I don't know why she couldn't just ask for more food. Cisco had they checked the menu just to see? Like, Thank you. If she maybe she had a point. I mean, I think she probably did have a point. I'm not trying to start honest. rumors here, but this is mm-hmm. true. The same company that provides school lunches for some of the largest counties also provide it for the prison system. And okay. they're the Don't same menu. Started. Yeah. So I wonder if maybe the mom had a point. Yeah. I'm not saying you should blow a school up. I'm not sure you have a point. I'm saying I'm the kid sure. should probably eat better than a prisoner. Well, <laughs> the salad bar, right? I always I would agree. have the salad bar ticket. Yeah. yeah. Unlimited trips. Really? What, what school yeah. did what you school go to? You? I went to uh, Temple. Okay. And Lakeland High School. And that's where Unlimited you got, yeah. salad bar trips? So you got the salad bar that ticket? That was for the sports team. It wasn't like one trip, one tank trip. No, like I got to go back up there and refill my iceberg lettuce, ranch dressing, and cheese. <laughs> that was your salad? <laughs> Everybody's got their own thing, okay? No, we don't oh, kink shame. Man. That's fine. It's, yeah, it's fine, Shre- it was shredded cheese. It wasn't like a slice. I'm not oh, a yeah. monster. Well, then that's different. That's yeah. a salad, baby. <laughs> Uh, our next headline, we have a uh, a customer at a sushi restaurant in Miami-Dade County. Heck yeah. yeah. All right. He goes up to... I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sushi is pretentious and overrated. I'm just going to make a stance here. Said the guy that just <laughs> described his perfect <laughs> salad as, okay. iceberg, as, as iceberg with shredded <laughs> cheese and ranch. I didn't say it's my perfect. Add cherry tomatoes to that and banana peppers. And yes. <laughs> sushi is my favorite food. It's garbage. It's... Yeah. I hate it. What? Wow. I've never yeah. heard this side of Josh's. I, I'm going to make a stance. Uh, sushi's garbage. Okay. All right. no, well, I, what, listen, let's move on, but I'm offended. I, you I, I, be, I was yeah. surprised, but anyways, uh, <laughs> this customer goes in the sushi restaurant, yeah. orders his food. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then I just assume that he kind of like had this idea when he was walking in because yeah. he goes back yeah, to the yeah. lobby, front door entrance. Okay. Um, and he sees, or I'm uh-huh. sure he saw it as he was walking in and just saw it and thought, I need that in my house. That's what I'm talking because about. Because he stole a Buddha statue. Well, you don't steal that. Doesn't come you, with the you blessings. Can't do that. You, can't you can't do, do that. that he no. takes it, puts That's it rude. out in his car. Oh wow! And then he comes back in. Okay. And just sits down and waits for his food. The sake was strong that night. Like nothing happened. I mean, yeah. he goes in, orders his food, steals Buddha. Yep. You know, and do comes you think back it was like a rival a team prank? What's the team? Like he's like a Christian guy. It comes in, takes the God. Buddha statue. Okay. I, I really hope that's oh, not it's religion the case. the religion here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That it, hasn't happened since the, what, 1400s? Yeah. Is that the world that you <laughs> want for our children? <laughs> I've got a question, and maybe Cam could jump in on this. Oh, uh, I but, don't know. But Wayne, as a Lakelander, um, right. there was a restaurant called Shogun. I remember that. They had a, I don't know, a pit. Come and, on. And they had origami just Come. folded and tossed mm, in there. Yeah. And you could take... However many you want. Yeah. I did. Uh, yeah, do you remember I, this? I do remember that. Yeah. I don't think, uh, if there's anybody listening that that steals things from restaurants. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't think uh, huh. that's appropriate behavior. No. Stealing stuff from restaurants is not appropriate no. at all. There's a low margin if you're a restaurant too. Honestly, it's like the lowest form of criminal mischief that you can Lock have. Lock them up and put them in the electric chair. I would agree. Always says. Yeah, I would really agree with that. Uh, honestly, stealing something from a restaurant is worse than my next headline. Let's hear no, it. What? Yeah, way worse. Okay. All okay. right. So we have a 70 year old Florida man. Oh, no. That's fine. Probably living in the villages, living just living life, large. living just large, living big, yeah. having the time of his life. He is out on the golf course. Uh, I think paradise. this is hole 15. All right. Just before seven o'clock. On a Sunday, oh, okay. I mean that's but, paradise. Yeah, you better uh, you better close that round soon because it's getting, yeah, you're, it's, it's, it's getting almost dark. dark. Yeah, uh, and you well, don't want to go into the whole sixteen with the night sky out. That's what they always say. Wayne says that every day. <laughs> <laughs> say it again. You don't want to go into that hole with the night sky. That's out. true. Uh, so, anyways, so this guy gets immediately upset when he sees another Florida guy okay. walking his dog near the fifteenth hole. That's okay. I'm on the cart path, right? Right. I don't Walking know. my dog. But I don't think there's a dog path. So he is upset. <laughs> yeah. The dog shouldn't be anywhere near the green or near the, the golf course in general. Oh, okay. Especially because this guy's trying to finish his round That's of golf. That's okay. What if I were walking alone, right? Right, right, right. Would you get frowny face then? Uh, I don't know if it was the fact that the guy was walking there more or the dog. So that's yeah. a good question. Thank you. Um, but... 
It wasn't the dog that got shot. Oh my gosh. Why is there a gun involved? That's a great question. It's a golf course. This Santa seven, Rosa County. The uh, 74 year old Florida man yep. uh, starts berating this man for being near the golf course. Sure. Yeah. There's from the art, the way the article reads, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of time from him saying, you shouldn't be on the golf course to he starts shooting Who and starts, shoots. Oh his, my God. He starts shooting at him. The, the guy, guy that starts has already done 16 holes. 15. 15 holes. Yeah. He pulls the gun. Yes. Why, why does he have a gun? <laughs> why does he have yeah. a gun? <laughs> that, come on. Well, we'll get to the next part in a second. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, anyways. Stri- strike one, anger issues. Yeah, he yes. pulls out his gun, starts shooting this guy, does hit him in the ankle. Oh, that's a bad spot. Strike two, actually. bad shot. Okay. He chases him with the gun. Well, this he guy's finds him behind anywhere. a tree laying yeah. down. Uh, he goes back to his cart. Gets a golf club. Okay. Oh, my God. Comes over, kicks the guy, beats Side him with a, two golf clubs, I think oh, is what wow. it says. Uh, and all for walking his dog near the 15th hole. Okay. He's 74 years old. There's Attempted some, murder charges. Wow. Like, yeah. he just threw everything yep. away because some guy was walking his dog. Now, I'm just going to say this. Um, where I'm from, an ankle shot's a warning shot. That okay. well, I think it where was. Where are you from? What's that? Where are you from? The Santa Rosa. Uh, Santa Rosa. Okay. The problem, I, I, I would totally agree. Yeah. I think if he had just like shot him in the ankle and left, I don't think cool. the cops would have even been called. Yeah, I agree. I think the fact that he went over and kicked him in the head and then beat him with you can't two do golf that. clubs. Yeah. You can't do that. That's pushing it over the line. Yeah. Okay. I think like if you're going to go with like a club to beat somebody with, yeah. a seven iron is probably the best. Oof. I was going to say that. wise and, and strength. Right. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Hey, fellas. Hey, Joshua. Josh. How are you? So this is a unique week. Yeah, it always is. Every week is Every unique. Every week is a unique yeah. week. But I've got a uh, an icebreaker that was submitted. Someone uh, issued me a challenge. Okay. They go, Josh, your icebreakers are hella creative. Yeah. And I was like, hella. Come that's on. cool. I say that. That's weird that you would frame it like that. And they go, could you make an icebreaker that was audibly unconventional, mm. almost unfriendly to the ear, okay. but entertaining. This is, an audi- wow. this is an audio podcast, though. Audio podcast. Yes, you got that right. Thank but you, so you want you- us to do something that is, d- doesn't do audio well. Yes, that's audibly unfriendly and mm. uh, not good to listen to. Okay. So, so can we make our show worse? Yes. Gotcha. So I, I uh, spitballed a few ideas. Okay. One was actually spitballing, like spitballing at a target. Who can do the furthest? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I thought, that's terrible. Right. And not entertaining. Sounds. Also yeah. insensitive. Yeah. Insensitive. So what I thought was the most entertaining subject uh, for us that we've all had a, I don't know, group chat about. Right. Uh-huh. Our conspiracy theory group Come chat. Come on. Yeah, but that's pleasing to the ears. This is going to be... That is in your speaking voice. Controversial. So this is... Um, luckily for me, uh-huh. I'm joined by two what I would call musical mavens. Or... Mavens. Cheers. Or chord conoscentes. Come on. Or Keep singing going. savants. Mm-hmm. We worked hard for these types. Melodic yes. maestros. Oh, yeah. I like that pitch one. Pitch prodigies. Mm. Yeah. So I've picked a real humdinger okay. for an icebreaker. This is, so your challenge this today, is fellas, bad. is pick your favorite okay. conspiracy theory right, and tell us, tell the other two mm-hmm. co-host using humming. Using humming. <laughs> humming is melodic. Well, you can, I mean, you two guys can nail it. I'm going to embarrass myself, but... Are I'm you telling us to tell the conspiracy theory using, using a song? Using only well, hums? I don't know if humming is always in song. Mine's not going to be. Humming is, it's just humming the melody of a song. There's no words. Sure. So I you want know. us to tell you a conspiracy theory Yeah. With no I'm words, no game. words and no melody. I will hum the conspiracy theory yeah. using I, no words. I yeah. think you're looking for mumble. And melody. No, I'm looking for hum. 
Mm, like if you were gonna that play was a, that was a conspiracy theory. A, no, that was just my name. Oh, okay. let me do a test one. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't picture it like that. Mine no, was he gonna put a be, song in there. I was gonna be George mm, Bush did nine eleven. I wasn't gonna <laughs> sing it. Wow, that's a good one. That's mine. Yeah, so I gotta I gotta change that. Uh, oh. I was thinking we were supposed to put it in a song, though. No, you so I misunderstood the rules. Yeah, I think we all do. <laughs> okay, so like mine would be. Hmm. 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 I okay. This is gonna be so bad. I see what you're well, saying. Yeah. That's the I'm challenge, right. right? That's the challenge. Yeah. yeah. Well, and what was Audibly yours? Audibly unconventional. That was the world is flat, right? Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay. But don't use your hands like I did. That was a hand. And flat yeah. seems like a hard word to hum. Hmm. <laughs> it seemed pretty obvious right there. You want me to do it again? Please. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I heard it that time. Yeah, that time it made more sense. Okay, I think it's going to be fine. I, I think it's going to be good. I, it's a challenge and we'll make yeah. it work. You know? Pull it's from com- our chat, our conspiracy chat. Come on. Okay. And then hum it to us. You guys can pick who goes first. I don't care. I'll go first. Okay. Don't care. Yeah, yeah. go for it. Are we guessing what he's saying? That's the pickle, right? Okay. We got to guess what he's saying. Okay. Uh, okay. I'll go first. I'm going to hum it. my conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. That was a lot. That was so that was long. Why okay. you pick something so long? <laughs> Sometimes the truth is long. <sighs> it is. Okay. I assume he's talking about MH370, the plane that went down. Mm-hmm. And that's hard to find. Come on, that's close. Okay, and a that's meteor really close. A meteor hit it. No, 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 oh, no, no. That's close. Cameron, what's your guess? <sighs> you threw me for a loop. I did or he did. Every everything about this. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure he. I thought he was talking about the moon at one point. I can see which, where you would think that. Which hum? Um, mm, mm. I can see where you would yeah, think that. That's what really get. Yeah. But then. I didn't think you could do like three sentences just about the moon conspiracy. So that's what threw me off. Yeah. Okay. But you're both close. Do you believe in the moon landing? Do you want to hear what it is? Okay. Yeah. Please confess. The American people are kept intentionally uneducated so the American government can continue its ways of imperialism. Is that a conspiracy theory? <laughs> Seems more like a like a theme to a paper, like a research paper. Yeah. You you said to quote my favorite conspiracy okay. theory. Okay, yeah. I mean, he got us. He got us. He got us. He, yeah. And okay. you both guess moon stuff. Okay. See, he did I'll, some kind of plane. My second guess, if I'm honest, yeah. was that like, because you're always big on like ghosts being real. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And yep. then like, but they're not like as like humans. They're manatees. <laughs> They're invisible manatees, and he's always preaching this. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. they're not invisible manatees. The I do believe yeah. that once you pass on, you become your favorite Florida a sea cow, sea mammal, a sea cow. Yeah. And then, so, it, like, he justifies it by going, you know, the shrimp that can see other colors. Yeah, it's like that. We just can't see the manatees floating around. But you got the answer wrong. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. so Cameron's got, got one. He's gonna. People. Okay. Cameron's gonna hum. Yeah, please. Hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Hold on. JFK is not really dead. What? Okay. I was going to say on. it. Go, Wayne. You guess. Holy That's not it. Yeah. Oh, that wasn't it? No. It's true, but it's not it. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. COVID-19. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. Let me try it again, because okay, I think okay, Wayne's okay, off yeah, a little bit. Okay, yeah. Try it again, please. Hmm. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, man, this you is got good. it. Okay, this okay. is. I don't know if we should even reveal this because I got it. I picked it up. Go ahead. I don't feel comfortable saying it out loud. Okay, please do. If we can edit it out if we need to. Dogs at the dog park. Oh gosh, are actually owned by one person. Whoa! All the dogs at the dog. Park. You're actually close. <laughs> Am I? That's yeah. a heavy hitter, bro. I would be careful saying that. Yeah. Honestly, I would be careful saying that. Um, do you want to know the tr- what it is? Yeah. Yeah. This is the biggest conspiracy theory okay. that I'm like in on or For like sure. not in on, but I'm aware <laughs> of. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I have some inside information on uh, what I said was Josh <laughs> was attacked by a house cat. Oh, my gosh. Now, wow. That's offensive. If I'm going to say it, a lot of people have yeah. been led to believe. Yeah. That you were attacked 
by a bobcat. Well, because that's the truth. Like a wild animal. Dude, this is a uncomfortable. wild animal. This jumped, is uncomfortable. Jumped I don't, me. Yeah, but it was a kitten. It was not. It was. Not, that's a conspiracy theory. So yes, I, you're <laughs> right about that. I hummed what I hummed. There's so, wow. <laughs> there's some truth to every conspiracy. Okay, theory. that's true. Okay, okay. mine's a, a short sentence, not a compound sentence. Thank like Wayne. Yeah, well, had. sorry. Uh, hmm. 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 This is. You sure you didn't get it? You want me one more time? Please, one more yeah. time. Okay, I'll try to enunciate my hums better. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. 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 Okay, I got the it. The war time. was for oil. I got it. That well, time. that's close. I got it that time. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, LBJ never liked JFK. That's also close. Yeah. Wow. These are. Uh, Greg is a real person. It's <laughs> my conspiracy. That's theory. a conspiracy. There, yeah. Theory. There's a there's a, a theory out there that Greg's not real. Right. Even though he's behind the camera. Yeah. Come on. I've heard people say that before. Yeah. So actually, guys, I'm going to embarrass myself here. Okay. Please do. I've I've predicted the conspiracies that you guys would pick because of our conspiracy chat and how well I know okay. you two. Okay. You do. You follow the conspiracy boys chat pretty closely. I really yeah. do. So I wrote down on two whiteboards the conspiracies that I thought you would hum tonight. No. Yeah, and I placed them under your seat. You no. Pre- you like, predicted our hums. Like yeah. Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah. If you'll grab the whiteboard and the pen, there's a pen down there too. I think it just scraped then, it on the rug. Yeah. And then the read whiteboard. it. Yeah. Hold it down. And then you're going to want to read it, do it with the marker. out loud to okay. us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Go ahead and <laughs> read it out loud. Wayne, you want to start? This is the uh, on a whiteboard hiding under our chair. Yeah. Um, like some kind of uh, talk show prank. Yeah. Josh has scribbled what he thought we were going to say. This is the, the, the conspiracy theory that I've heard you preach right. on the conspiracy the chat. Time. And Mine, that I thought you guys would say today. Mine says middle schoolers were correct. The right ear is the gay ear. That's, yeah. I don't know why you're all over that. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Like I remember in middle school when they'd be like, "Don't, don't, just pierce the right ear." Right, that's the gay ear. Okay, I do remember that. Yeah, and Cam, I mean, that's all everybody talked about. I Cam, do, I do recall that. Cam, what's your say? I don't want to read mine. <laughs> you have to. Oh, so many people are going to be offended tonight. Um, mine says Frank Frankie Muniz mm-hmm. contributed to the. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wow. I, all right. Yeah, that was my guess because you're all over it in the chat. Well, Frankie Muniz. If Frankie Muniz is. No. <laughs> no? He listens so? to our show. Okay. Well, there's a part two to the icebreaker. Oh, my God. Wayne, do you have your pen? You, you, I'm I feel like this is just to, being drawn out. I'm going to need you to get your pen. It's under the, the chair. Okay. Also. Do you want to borrow mine? No, no, no. We need it at the same oh, time. God, please no. Now. Okay, I've got my pen. Our show, yes, Florida yeah. Men on Florida Man. <sighs> okay sellouts to florida right yes we love, lean in hard to our state we love our state Absolutely. we love florida uh if you want to erase your um conspiracy theory okay oh, gosh. on our whiteboards yeah on your whiteboard yep this and, is fun yeah and i know how much you love the state because i equally love the state <laughs> that amount We've loved it. We've researched it. Right. You let me know when it's erased. I mean, my my board is white. I'm yeah. I'm I'm erased. For a hundred points. There's no points to be draw with. the state seal. What? Draw Florida's <laughs> state seal. What does it have to do with conspiracy theories? Nothing at all. <laughs> this is this is the quiz. It comes in at the end of the icebreaker. Draw oh. the Florida State Seal. It is round. Good start, Wayne. Okay. Wayne drew a circle, Cam. I don't think I tell you anymore. I know what it looks like. Okay. And then I'm going to need you to describe it because this is an audio podcast. Okay. Now, what Josh doesn't realize is yeah. on two occasions, I've taken an art class. I did realize that. I didn't think you listened to oh, okay. that. In 11th grade, Uh huh. I took it for a semester. Mm-hmm. Um and Josh, fun fact, was a senior. I was a junior. Uh, yeah, and I helped when, teach that. A, when our uh, art teacher um, would drink too much, Josh would substitute the class. Yeah, and there was a lot of uh, perspective and pointillism and right. pointillisms taught. So Josh did a lot. Josh right, did I'm a done. lot there. Do you want me to reveal? No, 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 oh, not okay. yet. I'm gonna uh, camera two or camera one. 
I'm going to show the Florida State seal. Okay. This is dead ringer, bro. <laughs> yeah. I feel, hold on. I feel like I forgot something. You feel I'm, like you I'm forgot so, I'm part still drawing of this? mine. Okay. Okay. I'm good. Okay, you're good? Okay. Yeah. And then I need a good description of what you've drawn. Oh, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Who wants to go first? Who's confident? I would love to go first. Okay. So Josh is showing uh, camera to the actual state seal. And now... and now um, Can you show it to us before Cameron we reveal Cameron and ours? myself are going to show I, now, I, honestly, our identical copies. I want a good copies. description of what you've drawn. How okay. about this? How oh, about before? I describe Cameron and Cameron describes mine? That'd be great. Okay. Cameron, show me yours. No, I'll that sh- doesn't seem show right. Me, show me yours. I'll show you mine. Okay. okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. So Cameron drew a circle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it says, Florida is great. In God We Trust. Yep. There's a steamboat on it. Yep. Okay. There's a woman who is bending over. Yep. Uh, those are flowers. Those are okay. flowers. I thought they wow. were like scattered beans, but that's a flower. It's pretty close. There's a chimney stack behind it. That's okay. a tree. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, okay. Wayne, what do you got? All right. uh, Jesus is king. Uh, there's a cross. <laughs> okay. There's a person with a road. Wow. And Cuba. Let me see exclamation that. Exclamation point. There's a Cuba exclamation point. Okay. Well. I, I'm gonna flip this around. I think Wayne Cameron was super sh- close. Wow, the boat I, almost identical. The woman bending over the tree. Yeah, she's standing straight. That's a wreck. What does it say? Great seal. Uh, God is good. The state of Florida and God we trust. Holy we moly! Trust. Yeah. What Listen, do you have written? When you know, you know. When you know, you're not. There are certain areas in our state uh, hmm. that owe their very existence to a handful of people. Mm, yeah, for sure. So people who pioneered the land and invested everything they had in order to make that territory succeed. Now, sometimes uh, those families were generous and they did it out of the kindness of their own hearts. Right. Okay. They Most pine- of the time. Yeah, All they, the time, I would say. Uh, there's mm-hmm. an exception and we're going to talk about the exception tonight. I think everyone just wants to help somebody else in their life and not, not do Ed it Ball. for themselves not Ed Ball. okay so so certain pioneers did come here with yeah. a loving spirit to pioneer the land right sure and 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 leave behind like a nice trail for other folks right mm. okay here's the thing uh oftentimes uh there were families that came through and they invested all that they had so that they could control the land mm. and do whatever they wanted to with it. okay I'm glad we okay. don't do that not anymore good. no we're not any longer that. in florida no greed uh but that was the case with the Ellis family. Okay. Hmm. Now, the history of this family is so interesting that it's difficult to just focus on one family member. Uh, but fortunately for us, the longer this family remained in power, the more insane their story became. Okay. Uh, so the Ellis family arrived in Calhoun County, Florida, in November of 1820. Big mm. fan of Calhoun County. Calhoun County is beautiful. Uh, To put it in perspective, when the family left Georgia and Mm -hmm. went south to find their new home Mm -hmm. in 1820, Florida wasn't even owned by the United States. Ah, was it the Spanish? The the weird in between. Yeah, there was a lot lot of people owned us before that. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was ceded by Spain the following year. Yep. But the point I want to make is that the Ellis family had been a staple in North Florida before the territory was even a state. Mm. They were here. They were planted. They were influenced. Uh, they were influencing people. So the, the Ellis has spent a hundred years making a name for themselves in just about every industry you could imagine in North Florida. So they mm-hmm. made their first million mm. by opening a logging company along the Apalachicola River. Mm-hmm. It's harder they, to make a million back then. It was oh, yeah, it it very difficult long, to make a million yeah. longer. Yeah. I mean, it, think about how much that in 1820s, like how much money that is. Oof. Crazy. Can't even. Uh, yeah, that's a great point, Cameron, because this. Just in the logging industry, they were already what you would call like an empire. Right. Really? They made a lot a, of trees. They made a million yeah. just from logging uh, hmm. on the Apalachicola River. Trees were cheap back then, too. Oh, yeah. That's like true. 10 cents a husk. Yeah. Uh, they dabbled in citrus farming. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also succeeded in cattle ranching. So wow. they, did, they okay. did whatever they could to make a dollar, and they right. were excellent at it. Okay. By the turn of the century, it was estimated that the Ellis name was attached to almost $80 million in assets. <laughs> what? Okay. That feels that's impressive. like the entire state, though. Yeah, like that's the, impressive. In the, the early 1900s, uh, that's an insane amount of money. 
Yeah. Like basically these people had a ton of cash. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it was in the early 1900s that the most notorious Ellis child was born. Charles Ellis mm. uh, was born June 20th, 1910. He was the one and only son of Mary and Jefferson Ellis. Okay. Uh, now, being the only son meant that Charles was the sole heir mm. to this empire, this right. Ellis family empire. Okay. Probably and a brat. Right away, <laughs> he behaved as such. Okay, yeah. This guy, a prophet over here. Yeah, bratty. Uh, he knows this, a brat when he sees one. He yeah. was as mean as a rattlesnake, this okay, kid. Okay, wow. Okay. Keep like, it relevant. Yeah. <laughs> he was cunning, yep. manipulative. Yeah. And just like everyone in his family before him, he knew how to turn a profit. Mm, wow. He was so mean that no one wanted to do business with him. Yeah. But the problem was everyone had to do business with him. Oh, you okay. hate that. Yeah. The Could Ellis I, family controlled yeah. everything. Yeah. Could it, I sidebar here? Yeah, sure. I've heard of an also a young entrepreneur. Come on. Sitting among us. Uh, a fellow co-host used to charge his grandma rent whenever <laughs> she would show up. Go on. House. Is that true? Are you looking at me? I'm looking at you, buddy. Absolutely, that's true. Your, gram your grandma visits and you charge her rent. If I yes, it was my room. This I, kid's as mean as a rest. I, I if I had I to sleep the on the source. couch, I wanted yeah. to make some money for it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Oh, I didn't know you were part of the Ellis fam. Well, now that we have a modern example. <laughs> That's of, so crude. Of what uh, nasty capitalism is. Right. Uh, no, no, no. no. Stop talking to my mom. <laughs> Josh getting all these stories. I got, I got a different mom. group chat. By the time <laughs> Charles Ellis was 30 years old, yeah. right, he had acquired just about every goods and service in and around the North Florida area where they were from. Okay. This guy was the governing power. It didn't mm -hmm. matter who was in office. Charles Ellis was the deciding factor in the early 1900s in that particular portion of our state. So no one wanted mm. to work with this guy, right. but you had no choice. No, You, you yeah. had to. Charles yeah. Ellis was the man. Despite his awful personality and aggressive business tactics, okay. something incredibly surprising happened to Charles in 1931. Uh, okay. Uh, he found Jesus. Close. Okay. He found someone to marry him. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, a uh, pretty good a, guess, though. A young local lady by the name of Rose mm -hmm. uh, somehow saw through the tough exterior, mm -hmm. and she fell in love with a man that everyone in the area was calling Satan's accountant. Well, some girls like the bad boy. Right. And uh, I mean, it had nothing to do with money. Uh -uh. No, could you imagine Satan's bad boy? Yeah, meeting someone and okay. falling in love with them, but everyone around you calls him Satan's accountant. Satan's accountant. Okay, oh, that's pretty bad. I, like, I Especially said, if they're like genuinely a sweet person. Yeah, and, at least a small part of, yeah. part of you would be like, I'm kind of worried. Yeah, like yeah. what side am I seeing? Yeah. And what type of currency does Satan deal with that he needs? Come an on, souls. Oh, oh wow, I Come get on. it. <laughs> so either way, uh, Rose was hooked. And yeah. now she was officially part of the Ellis family. Oh, no. Unfortunately for this young lady, problems began to appear relatively early on. Yeah. The prenup. Uh, well, oh, there was yeah. no prenup. Um, but Charles wanted an heir to his empire. Oof. And he would regularly tell Rose that her number one priority was to only give him a son. Wow. Is that like on the first date that you mentioned that's that? Like a, that's like a very like Old Testament, like mm. Game of Thrones yeah. style. Like, yeah. Yeah. You marry somebody and then you're like instantly like, hey, I, your one job is give me a son. Sons only. Okay. Well, Sons that seems only. like a lot to live up to. It's a lot to live up to. Yeah, I'm a human being. Well, here's yeah. the issue. Um, they were struggling with uh, fertility. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. of course, Charles being the monster that he is, mm -hmm. he's blaming this all on Rose. And this is where <sighs> things get tricky. Because Charles was unhappy with how long it was taking Rose to conceive. Okay. He found a different lady in town hmm. and convinced her to secretly try to give him a son. Okay. As like a backup plan. Okay. I guess. Like Just a, in case the other one doesn't happen. Like a backup huh. plan. I need an heir no matter what. How's it okay. going to work out for him though? Basically, he was hell-bent on creating an heir one way or the other. Okay. Uh, and as fate would have it, Charles' wife Rose gets pregnant mm -hmm. and all seems to be going well. Awesome. But three months later, mm -hmm. the second lady, who's not his wife, hmm. comes knocking on his door right. and says, hey, remember me? Yep. I'm nope, also not pregnant. really. I'm also pregnant. Yeah, baby on board. Mm. She's got baby the on little, board. the rectangle, yep. Yep. the square that's you did this, stuck on her she stomach. She says to him. Baby on board. Uh, so here's the thing. Now he's got a problem yeah. uh, that he created. Dose babies. It's because 
as far as his wife knows, this other lady doesn't exist. Right. She has no idea. Okay. Charles, being the monster of a man that he is, yeah. decides that he will wait and see which, which one of the boy. ladies gives birth to a son. Oof. Wow. And that Don't baby like that. will be the heir to his kingdom. Wow. Imagine the hmm. insanity here, yeah. first of all. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's crazy yep. behavior. Yep. He's got his ladies being kept a secret from his wife, and he's waiting to see which one is going to be a boy. I'm going to point out an obvious pickle. Yep. Uh, there could be two females born or two males born, right? Let's see what happens. Oh. Let's see what happens. Oh, okay. Now I'm taught. There's now some I'm drama taught. involved here. On December 13th, 1932, Charles's wife, Rose, gives birth to a son named, La- named yep. Landon Ellis. Okay. okay. And on February 24th, 1933, yep. three months later, mm-hmm. Charles, a secret mistress, also gives birth to a son. Bing! That's boom, two. Who she names Martin Ellis. Okay. Ah, wow. So two different ladies. Two different names. Three weeks after his second son, Martin, is born, that baby's mother mysteriously dies in an automobile accident. Wow. Which I should add, in the 1930s, death by automobile accident was highly irregular. Right. Now, they, cars went, they went like eight miles an hour. Yeah, and there's like True. four of them on the road. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Worst case scenario, you wake up in a ditch the next day. Not a big deal. No. Yeah. Uh, but Jeez. yes. So this second <laughs> baby... Uh, the mother of this child, uh, she mysteriously dies. Um, okay. And so this is how Charles decides to come hmm. clean to his wife, Rose. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. One day he brings baby Martin home, mm-hmm. the second child, and yep. goes, hey, this is also my son. Mm. You're going to raise both of them. Remember, you and you're going to love them sons. equally. Oh, yeah, right. Do you think she did? Not I a bet chance. she does. So Rose seems really nice. For those okay. of you who are following along at home, Charles now has two sons. His right. oldest is Landon Ellis. Mm-hmm. Okay. His youngest is Martin Ellis. Okay. Now, a few years later, Rose um, gets sick and she passes away. No. Car accident. Oh, uh, no, no, okay. no, no. Just illness. But Charles is now solely in charge of raising these two boys. That can't okay. be good. No. This guy shouldn't be in charge of anything. No. no. Okay. Much less human life. I mean, like, he's now yep. he's got... He's, he's, he's a bad guy. Now... Uh, he would always favor the son that he had with Rose, his firstborn Lantern. He would Legitimate. favor. He would yeah. favor the okay. son. Okay. Yeah. He didn't abuse Martin, but he definitely wasn't this loving father to him. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like he, mm-hmm. not in the slightest. So what happened was hmm. Landon grew up to be this typical rich boy mm-hmm. with everything handed to him, and Martin grew up kind of sweet and normal. Like they grew up in the same house, right? But Landon okay. was like, "Oh, I'm the heir. Yeah, my dad yeah. loves me." And Martin was like, "Hey, man, yeah. like my life kind of sucks, but like, but I'm rich. I'm a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and everything's so, easy. Everything's yeah. easy, right? It's a real Lord of the Rings story here. It well, it is. So despite their very different, I don't person, think so. <laughs> it's very similar. I knew he'd agree. Very similar. <laughs> <laughs> I said yeah right away. He really did agree so quick. <laughs> despite their very different personalities, yeah. Landon and Martin always got along as brothers. They were mm, always okay. looking after each other. Okay. Well, when the boys got old enough um, to mm-hmm. kind of understand like what an inheritance is, oh, oh, no. Charles sits them down and he goes, hey, if you complete college, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. will give you both a sizable fortune. Okay. You just sure. got to complete college. Yeah. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Can I nail down a number though? Because sizable right. could be like it. I mean, last time we checked... This family controlled eighty million in assets. Yeah, I want to know like my numbers got some commas in it and some zeros. <laughs> I'll give you. I'll give you a, a percentage. <laughs> okay. Both boys complete college. Mm-hmm. Okay. But when it's time to hand out the inheritance, mm. Charles holds a public announcement. Oh, okay. What? Where he gives his oldest son Landon ninety percent of the money. Wow. In business yep. assets, yep. and he gives his youngest son Martin a humiliating ten percent. A real okay. gift of the Magi story here yeah. uh, of the assets. So these guys are in their early twenties. Yep. Uh, they're the only sons of Charles Ellis, and he has just publicly humiliated Martin Don't by like giving that. him ten percent, and his okay. other son Landon ninety percent. But again. Mm-hmm. Despite their father being a monster, Landon and Martin decided to take a boat trip together hmm. to celebrate their inheritance. Okay. okay. Well, Whose idea was that? It was Martin's. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's get on the water. Yeah. $800,000 doesn't seem that much when oh, you're like... 80 million. Yeah. But no, yes, yeah, 800,000. You're right. Been 800, uh, quick math. Yeah. Uh, the this, this sailing journey that Martin yeah. planned okay. uh, would take the Ellis brothers around the coast of Australia okay. and then mm. bring them home again a month later. Maybe. Wow. That was the plan. The issue was a month later, when the trip ended, 
Only one brother returned home. Yeah, tell us. Oh, huh, what? And it was brother? the younger, 10% inheritance <laughs> brother, Martin. That's such an odd twist. It's a real Lord of the Rings story. It is. So Martin, sh- uh, Gandalf vibes. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Martin shows up without yeah. his older brother, Landon. Right. And he's just beside himself with grief. Yeah. He tells his father, Charles, that the boat's motor gave out okay. off okay. the coast of a small island near Papa. How many times did he practice this? You're not going to believe this. He says the boat gave out, yeah. the motor gave out uh, off the coast of a small island uh, near uh, Papua New Guinea. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And instead of waiting for rescue, his older brother, Landon, decided to jump overboard and well, swim for one of the islands. Wow. Okay, so he could be out there. We'll see. The island, however, yeah. in the 1950s, oh, no. was known for being inhabited by an isolated tribe okay. that supposedly practiced cannibalism. Yeah. What? They were so, big back then. It was real popular. Big cannibal trend. vibes back then. Yeah, so Martin trendy. is basically saying to the public and his father, even if he survived the swim, he was probably eaten. Yeah. Jeez. Definitely. By people on the island. Well, that's good meat. It yeah, is. right. Yeah. Yeah. Rich, he, rich boy, right. Yeah. Rich boy, butt. Yeah, yeah. foie yeah. and stuff. Mm. So here's the thing: this infuriated his father, Charles. Okay. Right? Basically, no one in town believes Martin, and Charles and everyone else is going. Probably what you guys are thinking: this guy killed his brother, yeah. and threw yeah. him overboard to, to claim a hundred percent of the inheritance. Yeah. Oh yeah. So instead of giving Martin all of the inheritance. Mm-hmm. Charles revokes the ten percent that he had already wow. given him, and then he banishes him from the family. Well, I guess who's going on a sailing trip with dad? <laughs> Here's the thing: <laughs> this leaves Martin, the younger brother, with yeah. absolutely no, no, nothing, yeah. no inheritance, yeah. no, no, no money, and nobody to support him. Mm-hmm. Charles, the father, then decides that since he has no surviving family, that he will donate his entire fortune really? okay. to local landmarks and charities. That doesn't seem like him wow. at all. No. Two weeks after this, yeah. Charles dies of a heart attack. What? Okay. And since everyone believes that Martin Ellis killed his older brother Landon, yep. Martin decides that there's nothing left for him in Florida, yep. and so he moves away to start over in Ohio. Because he doesn't want to get blamed. And that's the okay. end of the Ellis family okay. as we know it. Okay, Jeez. that's weird. Okay. This is a weird it's story. It's a weird ending. Let's fast forward 18 years. Please. Sure. In 1971, uh-huh. a missionary from Florida named Father Paul Alvarez is traveling around the islands off the okay. coast of Australia, sharing okay. the gospel what? of Jesus. No way. Father Paul makes an unscheduled, unplanned stop at a relatively small island yes. because he feels like people there are often neglected by missionaries and they deserve the good news as well. Yeah, they do. Well, it has a history of having cannibals. Right. Yeah. During Does this, he know that part? During this trip, Father Paul is surprised to see that amongst the village elders, <laughs> there is one elder who stands out from the rest because yeah. he is bearded and a white guy. Yep. Yeah. Wonder why he stands out. <laughs> the bearded white guy yeah. says that his name is Monty, which means equal. He goes on to say that he Love was it. reborn on this island okay. and is wow. therefore an equal with the inhabitants. Okay. So Father Paul finishes this trip For sure. and he goes back home to Florida. He starts okay. telling everybody about this random white guy he Good met guy. on this island full of supposed cannibals. Yeah. And one person overhears it and goes, oh, that's probably Landon Ellis. He disappeared near that sure, island. I guess. 18 years ago. Uh-huh. Father Paul becomes obsessed okay. with this story. I think yeah. you have to, yeah. Yeah. And he tries to track down Landon's only surviving relative, mm-hmm. his younger brother Martin. Who uh, killed him. Through Father Paul's investigation, yeah. he becomes convinced that this man is in fact the surviving older inheritance of right. the Ellis yeah. what? Throne, Landon Martin. Okay. In eight in 1982. Wow. After years of searching, Father Paul ends up locating Martin Ellis, the little brother in Ohio. He tells him mm-hmm. his story about the white elder. He mm-hmm. says, look, I know you didn't kill your brother. I believe you. Mm-hmm. I think he's on this island. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Martin, yeah. unfortunately, has moved on. He doesn't care. Okay. He says to Father Paul, you're right. I didn't kill my brother. But either way, he died that day. Mm. Did so, he push him off the boat, though? To this yeah. day, the mystery remains officially unsolved. Did Martin murder his older what? brother what? for his portion of the inheritance, or did he truly survive and go on to live as one of the people off the coast of Papua New Guinea? What? That's the tragic so tale still of unconfirmed. the Ellis family. The only evidence we have of this okay. is this missionary from Florida mm-hmm. who says, look, I, I saw what I saw. Right. Yeah. This yeah, yeah. guy, this there's this random white hmm. guy there. 
He's yeah. an elder. He's a beard. He told me his name was Monty. He's an equal to these people. Do you think he was saying money? Oh, oh wow. come on. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I'm worth a lot of money. Please can take find, me. Can you find my dad? Yeah. <laughs> they eat people. He hands him a note. <laughs> He hands him a note. Please yeah. help me. Please help. Yeah. Isn't Money. that insane, though? Okay, I mean, like, that's insane. What's yeah, crazy about insane. this is, is this family gets crazier the longer they're around. Yeah. 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 But after all of this power and all mm-hmm. of this influence, you know, basically 50, 60, 70 years ago, this family ceases to exist. Love that. They well, write themselves out of existence. Yeah. If I the mean, dad had just gone okay. into this with the idea of, well, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna love any child I get. Come Bingo. on, yeah. Yep. And if I don't get a son, that's okay. Love I'm wins. That's what just you're gonna saying. Donate all my money to yeah, charity. Yeah, maybe just be patient or donate it to the daughter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, what? a daughter's okay. And that and that's the thing is a lot of and this is something we see often in a lot of history is the uh, patriarchs behave that way. Uh, they like only monsters. care about their monsters. They're terrible human yeah. beings and they demoralize mm-hmm. people and they use people mm-hmm. and they're they're awful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and what we've seen a lot, especially in Florida's history is these smaller regions, because Florida was tossed around so much from different ownerships, Spain, True. the UK, and the United yeah. States, it, what you have is these self-governorships, these little right. areas, these regions where people with the most money and influence, mm-hmm. they ran it no matter who was in office. Yeah, mm-hmm. And oftentimes, because of their violent behavior and their nasty behavior, those families just died out. They're, there's a that. reason why they're yeah. not around today. Right. Like yeah. You don't really have a lot of ruling families in Florida yeah. because most of them had practices that led to their extinction. So... This is one of them, but there wow. may be one. Theoretically, there they could still be one out there mm. on this island as an elder. Okay, yeah, you but guys there are go some with great me? some great landmarks, though. I would love to go. All the money's gone. It's in like some obelisk, you know, in Tallahassee. Right, yeah, 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 with his name on it's it, like buried yeah. underneath it. But that's yeah. the thing is, I think we guys should take a vacation. Let's do it. I've been wanting to tell you guys about this. We we split oh, no. we split uh, the show's finances equally. Right. I, I haven't would like, received anything. I would like to take a boat trip with you guys. Hmm. Maybe off the coast of Australia. All I get is like 12 pack of eggs. There's been no <laughs> currency that has made That is the currency. Is it? Okay. Patreon.com slash yeah. FMOFM podcast is where you can find out more about our show. And if you like what you hear and yeah. you want some bonus stuff, we've been live streaming all night long to our live streamers. Yeah. And we appreciate them so much. They yes. help us go further faster. Yeah. They're great people. The real question is, uh, what in what situation would you eat? Another co-host. Come I on. Like, would, I would it be say, like 10 days on a raft with no food? Or I think like three days. You put me up food. here to record and huh? I haven't had supper? Yeah. I'll take a chunk out of Cameron's thigh. That's true. Just that leave my calf muscle? Just, no, God leave bless. my calves alone. Okay. My jaw's not strong enough to bite through that. No. Oh, the quads. You, you can go for the... No, I got to put my legs down. Come yeah. on. Those quads are porterhouses.